These are the pocket operators. We're gonna learn all about how these things sync. Welcome to Hack a Week. So these are the pocket operators from Teenage Engineering. They are a pretty awesome company that makes these little buggers. They are about the size of a pack of cigarettes and they have um, a total of 16 sound buttons three on the top that control sound pattern and beat per minute and then four along the side that do various things like uh, write play and then some effects and they uh, sync you can connect them together with an eighth inch audio cable stereo audio cable and you can sync them and i've got these set up right now in in sync mode you set them up in sync by pushing a few buttons and getting them configured properly so we're going to go to the overhead camera and I'm going to show you how these things work. Here they are, the pocket operators, as in PO, the model numbers. This is the PO16 factory, the PO14 sub, the PO12 rhythm, and the PO20 arcade. Each one of them have very unique sounds and patterns already built in. And there are other videos on uh, YouTube explaining in great detail how to use these individually. I will link to one of those later on, but right now suffice to say that there uh, are some parameters here where you can make sound adjustments. Each one of them has particular sounds. If you push sound and the corresponding button, let's just pick one. Now all 16 of these buttons will play that sound on a scale. So you get the idea, and here's another sound. Let's try sound number three. And then you have patterns also. This one is set to pattern number one right now. Stop and play is that button. Now on the sub, there's lots of really cool bass sounds. That's my favorite. That is sound number, not sure which one that is. Anyway, that's a great bass sound and there are others. Pretty cool stuff. So anyway, the rhythm obviously is a drum kit um, with all kinds of drum kit sounds. The arcade has a tiny drum kit built in. Um, there's lots of cool stuff to do with these, but what I want to show you now is how they sync. If you push this key right here um, on all of these, it's uh, basically a function key. Um, so we'll just go like this, push this, push beat per minute, and right here you'll see it changes from sync 0 to sync 1. It says SY1, SY0. SY0 is no sync at all. It just plays by itself. SY1, what it does is send out a pulse on the left channel of the audio cable. That pulse is one volt in um, voltage, positive, and it lasts for about 2.5 milliseconds. It passes that on down the line as a time sync signal. So to sync these up, you put this in sync one, and all the rest of them down the line until you get to the end, you put in sync five. We'll put this one at sync five. And the one at the very end, you put in sync four, which then outputs the final chain of audio out to the amplifier, the mixer, the whatever you want. So let's set this one to sync four. Now what you have to do is push play on all three of these units and they're now synced with the first unit and you can turn these three off and as soon as you hit that one off everything stops so if I push play on all three of these and push play here they all play. Whatever the last note was that's playing will continue to play if play is still on. 
Volume is done by holding beat per minute and then pushing any one of the 1 through 16 buttons. So let's turn this down a little bit. Let's put it on volume 4 all the way down the line. You have to hold BPM, push 4, BPM 4, BPM 4, BPM 4. Now the funny thing is you can't control the volume individually when it is playing. If you increase the volume on one of these down the line, it increases everything. And then you start to lose more and more of the first one. So let's trigger this. And we'll kick in the bass. And the rhythm. Now if I turn the rhythm up, It gets pretty loud, but you don't hear what's going on further up the chain. I'll put that back at four. Let me turn this one up. Doesn't really make much difference. It's all dependent on what's going on down the line. So that's kind of a thing about these that it is a little bit of a drawback. Other than that, there are loads of fun, and you learn to work around it. My workaround is a bit different. I wanted to go ahead and set them all up so that I can push play on any one of them because I can't just push play on the bass. I can't just play the bass only unless the first one is going that sends a pulse for the time sync. Now I can play the bass. So I wanted to be able to have all four of them able to play and pause at will. So how I did that was with this. This is just a little Arduino circuit that does nothing more than output a pulse train. It's a 2K signal and it's got a amplitude of 2 volts. From everything I've read in the data I've read about hacking these things, you don't want to exceed 5 volts on that sync signal. That's not good. So. I'm probably going to do some more work on this and put a little voltage divider on the output to drop it down to one volt. But for right now it's at two volts, it works okay. It's got a pulse width of about 2.5 milliseconds. So it serves well as a, uh, a pulse generator to put in here and run it all the way down the line and then I can individually control each one. Let me show you some waveforms on the scope. All right, let's take a look at the scope. Incidentally, this scope was donated to me by a Hack Week viewer. It's a Tektronix TDS-1100C EDU. Um, you know who you are. Thank you very much for that generous donation. I've been using this scope more and more because it's easier to look at square waveforms on this than it is on the old 453 scope, although I like the 453 smell when I turn it on. Anyway, I've got the PO16 factory connected to uh, the speakers right now. I've got it set on sync one, so it's outputting the pulse. I want you to hear what that sounds like. So you can hear that pulse train coming out of there. So let's now run it through the scope and you can see it. And there it is. And we are at, oh, and it went away. What happened? There it is, okay. Uh, we're at one, um, volt per division on the voltage uh, so we've got one volt into the positive and we're at one uh, millisecond per division so we're at almost three it's actually about 2.7 something like that um, the specs say it's a 2.5 uh, pulse width 2.5 milliseconds but anyway there it is that's the pulse that it works with to sync it to the other units. Now let's take a look at the pulse I created with my little Arduino metronome. Okay, let's take a look at my uh, metronome signal. Power it up. Let's freeze this as a pulse. And there it is. It's about a little bit higher. It's a little noisier at the top than the other pulse is. Uh, but it's uh, one volt per division, so it's at about 1.7, 1.8 volts. And looks like the pulse width is about one, 
2, 2.3, 2.5, so close enough. So it works. It's a pulse that will work to sync these little buggers. So now let me hook it up that way and demonstrate. Okay, pocket operators here. Arduino metronome here. The speaker for the metronome is right there. I'm going to power it up then I'm going to disconnect the speaker because it's an annoying beep that we don't need and I still have my single signal routing through here. So um, let's see. Right here on the display on all of these when I fire up the pulse you're going to see them flash with every pulse. Right there. So that tells me they're getting the signal. Let's get rid of the speaker. And I'm not sure if you can hear it, but you can barely still hear that pulse coming through the audio chain. Let me turn up the last unit and you'll see what I mean. See, it's still there. It's still present. But it's so minimal, I don't think it's going to show up in the mix at all. And even if it does, it's, it's a metronome click. It'll just disappear with the music. But here's the cool part. Now I can turn on any one of these. I don't have to have the master going to be able to run the others. So I can just kick in the rhythm first. Then I can come in with the cool sounds from the factory. And I can bring in the bass. And I can alter my beats per minute right here on this potentiometer. I can slow it down to a stop if I want to. Fun for mixing. So, now what? Now what I want to do is take this pulse train that's coming from the metronome and feed it into each one of these. Incidentally, each one of these will sense when there is a plug in either one of the jacks. So, as soon as I unplug this right now, this is going to go back to sync zero automatically. And then when you go to play with it, it'll come through the little onboard speaker. So it won't be sending out the pulse, it'll just play through here. So we're going to send that pulse train in on all four of these. So we're going to link that together and then that frees up this output to bring to a mixer on all four of these. Now I could put this into my four channel mixer, but I thought it might be fun to build a little rack for these that I can set them in, hook it up, and I've got four potentiometers on there. And then that signal that's mixed in as a signal signal that is single, wow, can go to an amplifier, to the PC, to your headphones, whatever. So that's the next step. We're going to build this little rack for these things. And maybe even build this um, metronome even smaller still. Um, in a couple videos ago, I was talking about this little robot. It's got a tiny little microcontroller. I think I'm going to steal it out of here or maybe use another one, but I've got a bunch of microcontrollers around. I've got a drawer full of them. I'm going to make a dedicated little metronome. So a quick search on the internet, um, Google, and I found a multi-channel audio mixer circuit using the LM3900, which is a quad op amp well suited to audio applications. This is the schematic. This schematic has two mic inputs, two line inputs. Let's just forget the mic inputs because the impedance is going to be different. I'm just going to use line inputs and so I'll just be duplicating this part of the circuit twice using uh, all four internal op amps. So just forget about this. We're going to do this and um, put it all on a nice little perf board probably and then stuff it into Let's see, I got a little box here. Let me just put it in this box. 
and uh, put some 1K knobs in the top, some input jacks on the side, and the output will be just off from the pocket operator. So that'll be for the next video. So fun stuff, these pocket operators. I'm having a blast with them, and the more I mess with them, the deeper I get into the really cool things they can do. I've got four of these. I think there's a total of seven available because there's a couple new ones out, the Metal Series. And uh, by the way, do you hear that? Ah, that was the Nerd Thunder clap. It's Nerd Thunder Month, so it's all about sharing uh, channels. Go check out um, Red Means Recording, which is... Jeremy Blake's channel. He does some really cool stuff. This guy is awesome. He reviews and plays so many synths. Talks about them, explains them, and it's really good video. He does video and audio and music for a living. He has a production company that does that stuff. He's a really talented guy and got an awesome channel with a whole bunch of videos to watch all kinds of stuff about these pocket operators and many other synthesizers. Go check him out right now. Um, or, well, after this video is over, be sure to go check him out. But there's the link right there off to the side. And uh, click the card and you'll see it. Nerd Thunder. So, um, yeah, Jeremy's cool. Check him out. Anyway, this is going to be a fun little put together. And I think I'll let him know about it when it's all done because I've got a name for this thing. Uh, these are pocket operators, and so the little device that I'm making that you can plug them all into and have separate volume control and have its own time sync, I'm going to call it the operating table. Cool, huh? So next video, on this one anyway, there might be a couple in between, but in the next part of this series, we are going to uh, have that all, we're going to put it together. Together. Together, we're going to put it together. So be sure to come back and watch that. So anyway, um, till next time. <laughs>